tackled the issue of how much RAM is needed for gaming these days, but what about VRAM? After all, video RAM is probably the graphics card specification that stands out the most at first glance. But what exactly does it do? And how much VRAM do you really need for an optimal gaming experience? If any of these questions have been keeping you up at night, you've come to the right place. So let's start with the basics. What exactly is VRAM? This might come as a surprise, but video RAM is fundamentally not all that different from the system RAM. It stores relevant graphics data so that the GPU can access it whenever it needs to. The only differences are that VRAM is built directly into the graphics card and that it tends to be faster. Most modern GPUs use GDDR5, GDDR5X, or GDDR6, while some use HBM2. So now that we know what VRAM is and how it functions, let's take a moment to consider its place in a PC food chain. What eats VRAM? Unsurprisingly, the answer is graphic settings. But while nearly every setting will chop away at least a bit of RAM, there are four main culprits that you need to look out for. These are the rendering resolution, the texture quality, the LOD distance, and certain types of anti-aliasing like MSAA or TXAA. Out of all of these, the resolution is definitely the most demanding. Textures and LOD distance used to be a really big deal, but nowadays you don't need to worry too much about these when shopping for a graphics card. The same could be said for anti-aliasing, which is slowly but surely becoming less relevant due to the increasingly higher resolutions found in gaming monitors. The more pixels there are, the fewer jaggies there will be, especially in small screens. Now we go back to the titular question. How much VRAM do you really need for gaming? Seeing as the rendering resolution is the most demanding graphic setting in regards to VRAM, we can use that to formulate a good rule of thumb for how much VRAM you need. For gaming in 720p, even 2GB will suffice, but if you want to have an enjoyable 1080p experience, it would be best to aim for at least 4GB. As for 1440p, 4GB might do, but 6 or 8GB would be optimal. And finally, if you're aiming for 4K, 8GB of VRAM should be a bare minimum. Of course, this is all assuming that you want to run the latest AAA games with relatively high settings. Truth be told, even a 4GB card would be able to manage 4K. But in that scenario, all the graphics sliders would be dragged so far to the left that there would be little point in gaming at such a high resolution. Besides, always remember that when it comes to gaming and the speed with which graphics are advancing, what's just enough today might not suffice tomorrow, so it's good to have future-proofing in mind. In conclusion, while everything we've said may have been a generalization, it should give you a good lay of the land for understanding VRAM. Do, however, note that while a 4GB card should handle most modern games in high settings, we'd still recommend that you buy a graphics card with at least 6GB of VRAM, if for no other reason than future-proofing. And there it is, a quick overview of VRAM. We hope that you find this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe if you did, and also feel free to leave your thoughts down in the comment section. We'd love to hear what you think. And as always, see you next time on Gaming Scan.